Hello everyone, it's Doug McGuff with Ultimate Exercise, Body by Science, DrMcGuff.com. Today I just wanted to um, run through something that Ken Hutchins taught me about fat loss some, some while back. And it's the role of resistance exercise in the context of a calorie deficit. And this was something that he made a point of with uh, clients that are on a calorie deficit diet, the importance of resistance exercise. And the concept was to think of the particular person's body as being like a corporation. And that the corporation is now being faced with the challenge of a budget deficit. And this was very pertinent to anyone that was on a calorie loss diet. But it's even more pertinent now in the age of the GLP-1 agonists, which through a variety of hormonal and chemical messaging actually results in a very aggressive um, calorie deficit or energy deficit situation. So if we imagine our body as a corporation and we're all of a sudden on a budget deficit, basically the body goes to the board of directors and says, hey, we're at a budget deficit. Board of directors says, okay, we're gonna have to make some cuts. Do we have any unusual orders coming in? And under normal circumstances, that answer is no. So the board of directors then says, okay, who is our biggest payroll expense? And then the corporation will have to answer the biggest payroll expense is muscle. It's a metabolically active tissue. So the board of directors says, okay, let's really lay off in the muscle department. Uh, what's the next most metabolically active? So it's, well, it's kind of a toss up between bone and nervous tissue. So we're gonna do some layoffs here. But fat tissue, that is relatively inert and it has a low overhead cost. So we'll lay off a little bit of that. So in the context of a budget deficit, this corporation has laid off a large amount of muscle, a moderate amount of bone and nervous tissue, and a small amount of fat. So that's what happens when you have indiscriminate weight loss. You're just applying the calorie deficit across the board and you're making decisions on who is expensive. Now, let's say that you're in a calorie deficit, you're taking a GLP-1 agonist, like Monjarno or um, Ozempic or something of that nature, but now you're also going to a hit studio and working out, sending in a big order for skeletal muscle. So now, now we go to our board of directors and say, where can we lay off? Any unusual orders coming in? We're saying, well, yeah, big order coming in for muscle. It's like, well, we can't lay off in that department, so let's see if we can double down on bone. But the corporation says, well, look, the muscle department really relies on bone because it attaches to bone. The bone actually needs to be stronger. So we have to hire on more muscle and hire on more bone. Well, okay, let's lay off in nervous tissue. And it's like, well, wait a minute. Skeletal muscle is useless unless it's innervated, so we can't lay off in the nervous tissue department. So we're having no layoffs here. We're actually hiring on more here, here, and here. So the only thing we can do to make up this budget deficit is to lay off here in the fat department. So if you're taking a GLP-1 agonist, you really need to seek out a high-intensity training studio and take on weight training because if you don't, you will have indiscriminate weight loss that is actually shuttled towards the elements that you least want to lose. Whereas if you're doing appropriate strength training in the context of taking a GLP-1 agonist, you will shunt all of your weight loss towards fat loss. And the important thing is every undesirable shape on the body is accounted for by underlying fat tissue and every desirable shape on the body is accounted for by underlying muscle tissue. So you are going to shunt everything towards the undesirable tissue that you want off your body. And that is the advantage and the synergistic effect of using resistance exercise in the context of a calorie deficit. So for drmcguff.com, Body by Science, Ultimate Exercise, you guys go out and do some dope shit in the real world.